Everyone has a story. Everyone has a defining moment. Let me let you in on the secret that led them to their goal. Their strength lies solely in their tenacity. Welcome to Tenacious Thoughts. I am your host, Kimberly Tenacious T. Togo. Everyone has a story. And the one thing that gets them through those moments that they must overcome is their tenacity. Welcome to Tenacious Thoughts. And today we have Brie Kruger, a great American title. And thank you so much for allowing us to come into this gorgeous podcast room that you now offer as one of the benefits of being a client of Great American Title Company. Mm -hmm. And Brie, please introduce yourself and then I want to go back through some history of yours. Sure. My name's Brie Kruger and I'm a sales executive at Great American Title. And I absolutely love working with realtors and lenders and investors and creating and building with them and building their business. And I'm licensed. I did that for a little while, but I don't get the same joy out of it as I do when I'm helping others create and build. You know, interesting. I was going back through some of your history and as far back as let me get my notes here, people. As far back as uh, 2013, you were a public relations mm -hmm. uh, executive at Stone Path Real Estate. Then you also had your own marketing company called Internet Driven Marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, West USA, the Seabock team, the Werner Group, Nova Home Loans, Rock Title, Home Smart, and now in 2023, mm -hmm. Great American Title Agency. That is quite... That is quite an 11 years for you. Uh, <laughs> please go from what even prompted you to get into, hey, I'm going to do some real estate. Right. It's really interesting because I grew up in the business and my dad was a broker and a real estate investor and my mom did rehabs and flips and she's mainly on the construction side, but she was a residential real estate agent as well. And I, growing up in the business, I said I would never get into the business because I saw the highs and the lows and oh, yeah. the feast and the famine. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I said that must be crazy for someone to get into an industry with so much that could go wrong. Yes. And, you know, I, I was building my marketing company, and it was geared towards real estate agents and lenders. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely loved that piece of it. And I was at the same time down in 2010, 11, um, 9, 10, 11, I was bidding on properties down at the courthouse steps. Sure. That was the time of the big bubble burst. That was, mm -hmm. you know, when, well, even myself, we had the, the short sale. Absolutely. You know, a lot of us went through this. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was very large, widespread here in Arizona, especially. And so... Um, I was down at the auction and I fell in love with that high sales yeah. of, okay, where it's kind of like Shark Tank, you're jumping in and everyone has the relationships down there, which really serves you. And I liked that piece of it. But I also liked being able to purchase or help investors purchase these homes for 30000 40000 and then have our rehab crews come in and, and cut them all down to the studs and completely renovate, sure. and they look like beautiful dream houses afterwards. So would you say that in that environment, were you one of the few women that I were was. actually successful at that time? Mm -hmm. And how did that feel? It felt very good. Yeah. It, it was myself and my mom, and there was one other lady down there. Mm -hmm. And it was empowering to say the least, but it's also we were underestimated a lot. Yes. And I use that to my favor. Yes. I think we do as business women, you know, we, we are feminine, we are soft, mm -hmm. but we're also savvy. Mm -hmm. And we know how to play that, you know, using that word lightly, play, but it's but it's true. Mm -hmm. Part of negotiation, part of being a savvy business woman mm -hmm. is being able to recognize when someone does underestimate you, like yes. a poker game. Absolutely. Do you play poker? I do not play oh, poker. Oh, well, you should play poker. It might be good at it. Anyway, <laughs> that was off on a tangent. So hmm. you ended up 
So I ended up doing that for a couple of years mm-hmm. and, and really enjoyed that. And that's what made me want to get back into helping the agents on a higher level. Yes. So I sold my marketing company and full circle, my boss now, I used to teach classes for him. Wow. When he was a rep at another title company before I sold my company. So what do you think as far as marketing and mm-hmm. your creativeness, because you are bringing something to Great American Title that I haven't seen before. We just mm-hmm. went to an event and I was like, oh, this is good. <laughs> I loved it. I love the whole, it, it really embraces that going back to real speaking yep. and real gatherings, not mm-hmm. just, you know, B2B, but mm-hmm. an emotional support environment in a huge event. It was, it was lovely. So, mm-hmm. As far as being creative, what set you apart in your marketing mind? I think a lot of it has to do is everything I wish I had when I was an agent is what I pour into it for agents and help them build that that kind of enterprise, not just on the marketing side, but on the back end of the business side as well. Right. And I think a lot of people in my in my position They don't know what they don't know. So they don't understand how the business side of a realtor and a lender works. And they also don't understand the ideas and how to implement the ideas. Yes. And there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. And it's really trial and error. And I was lucky enough to have tried it for long enough Mm -hmm. to know what works and what doesn't work. What's interesting, I myself, having been in the industry for 11 Mm -hmm. years as well, It's interesting that most marketing reps, Mm -hmm. whether it be for title or lenders, they really just look for the acquisition. Look for the acquisition. Let's get you some flyers. I'll bring you a tray of food, Mm -hmm. right? That that seems to be the industry norm. And Mm -hmm. really, they feel like, and I'm not saying that they're not supportive, and of course they are, but like you said, they only know what they know. Yeah. Again, you're bringing a different level to Mm -hmm. this. You're not only bringing all of those standards that we've seen in the industry, Mm -hmm. but you're adding to it and giving agents an opportunity to speak, to express themselves, to show off what makes them different Mm -hmm. in a collaborative community effort. Tell us more about that. Agreed. I I think it's important, no matter what side of the business you're on, is to have deep relationships. Like I, I grew up in old school real estate. It was deep relationship building And it wasn't the fast acquisition. It wasn't the fast, I'm going to do this and you're going to give me that. It wasn't transactional. It was very much relationship building. And I love building community around me. And I tend to do that wherever I go. And I absolutely love, like my agents, a lot of my agents who have now been to many events, um, they hang out. Yes. You know, we do vision board parties once a year and they call each other. Like they call each other and when one of them are on the other side of a transaction from them, it makes the biggest difference. Yes. Because you can talk to them in a very professional manner, but also on a human level. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) And speaking of on a human level, one of the questions I ask each and every guest is the first five words that come to mind. Mm -hmm. And you said connection, love, creative, coffee, and nature. All of these things, including the coffee, you know, we get together for a (laughs) cup of coffee. All Mm -hmm. of these things lend to humans getting Mm -hmm. together, collaborating, sharing energy, sharing ideas. Tell us about some of the plans that Great American Title Mm -hmm. has through you coming up with, do you have some masterminds coming up? What's Mm -hmm. your next event? What are the next, let's say, two big events you want people to know about? Sure. Sure. Uh, well, we're in the planning phases right now, but obviously we we love hosting events and creating events. Yes, I could just kind of attach my name to one of the events that are already out there, but I like creating my own because I think it, it creates a special energy, like you said, yes. and it also allows me to gather the right people together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we did a couple of years ago ladies who close event mm-hmm. and that was super fun it was a female panel and it was just tons of information and sorry guys it was females only but we were just connecting Nothing together <laughs> and and sharing and collaborating over competing and i think yes. that was a really cool event that i i hope to bring in 2025 so that was pretty big 
and then I would love to start doing masterminds again. I did them previously on uh, on the agent side and sales team side, and it was super fun. It- and I think you've really hit the nail on the head when it comes to there's nothing wrong with having a group of women mm-hmm. or a group of men because they each have a different vision when mm-hmm. it comes to real estate, be it investment, resale. Each of us men and women bring a totally different aspect. And that's why some people choose a male agent, some people choose a female agent because of that different energy that surrounds them. Absolutely. And I think it's important to, people are going to vibe with the person they're going to vibe with. And the beautiful thing about real estate is there's so many people out there who are agents for better or worse, but there's lots of different people you can connect with as well. Yes. So if, if you really enjoy a certain perspective or attitude or someone with a certain personality to take you through the process, you have that ability in real estate. Yes. Owls was your Mm -hmm. favorite animal. Another question I ask. (laughs) Owls was an interesting choice because owls obviously are intuitive. They lend Mm -hmm. to the spiritual community, but they're very wise and Mm -hmm. they're calm. Yeah. You know, they're, they're calm. And you also (laughs) said your favorite time of day is nighttime. Yes. Owls are nocturnal. I know. So would you say in a way that that's your spirit animal? And please Mm -hmm. tell me why you chose an owl. Absolutely. I think they're um, very intuitive, like you said, and they, it almost is like they have that majestic quality in them, um, the magic in their eyes, but also like they see your soul and they hold souls. Yes. And I think that's just a beautiful energy, but still being wise and collected and reserved, but they're dangerous too. Totally fits you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because in business, obviously, from what you've already shared, you're a dangerous opponent, (laughs) so to speak, right? You you really can see things. You can see the path. You can Mm -hmm. see the benefits. You can see where you can come in. That's obvious by your length of time in this industry. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me a story about maybe a personal or emotional time in your life? Mm -hmm. Because right now, like you said, there is so many agents. Arizona has the highest concentration of agents per capita, and there's a lot of them struggling, struggling on a daily basis, having that doubt, it's feast or famine. Can you give us a story about how you pushed through and overcame? Absolutely. Um, I, I think there's so many stories to pick from, but one of the things that always comes to mind is I was in a really bad car accident when mm. I was 20, mm. and I was in my uh, final final year at my MBA program at ASU WP Carey and it completely changed my life and my trajectory in my life and now I look back and I'm so grateful for it because I wouldn't have had I wouldn't have been able to have the life that I've had so far and I wouldn't have been able to be on the trajectory that I am going forward share with us what what were your injuries what was the recovery Mm -hmm. So a drunk driver stopped at a um, a red light, and then they decided to go through the red light. Mm. And I was turning left, and it swung me around and pushed me into the pole. Yeah. And completely T-boned, and it was a really bad accident. I had to learn how to walk again. Wow. I had to go through physical therapy for eight months, and I had to do tons of different Um, exercises and training and massage and acupressure, acupuncture. There was just so many things to kind of heal. And it took me about a year and a year and a half to heal to make it manageable. What was the one thing that made you choose life every day? Defiance. You just weren't going to take no for an answer. You were ready to push and get through. I had a doctor tell me, you're not going to walk again, and my rebellious spirit said, watch me. There you go. There (laughs) you go. And that is a testimony to energy, Mm -hmm. to determination, to what you set your mind to, Mm -hmm. what the mind can conceive, the heart can achieve. Yep. I love, 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 love that. Um, And I think, again, another question I ask is, what's your favorite part of the body. You said Mm -hmm. eyes and hair, but eyes, let's take Mm -hmm. eyes specifically. 
when you've had, let's just say, near-death experience, because mm-hmm. I would say that that was a near-death experience, people's eyes are different after that. Correct. People's eyes show you exactly who they are after mm-hmm. that. You recognize the soul yeah. within them. That's a really great way to say that because it's not just, it's not just an, oh, I see you. It's like an understanding. Yes. Like I see you. Yes. It goes deeper. And I think it's important to point that out because anyone who's looking to come to you, mm-hmm. come to this com- company to mm-hmm. represent them, to be a part of their transaction, to mm-hmm. help them get more of themselves out there, mm-hmm. you see them. I do. And I love coming alongside them mm-hmm. and creating with them and really partnering with them. And I, I look at this business as I'm, I'm your business partner. Yes. I'm not your title rep. Right. I'm your business partner. And I take that with responsibility and seriousness. Yes. Like if, if we build a lead generation system together, that's something we created together. Because you know how valuable time is. Mm-hmm having been through that at a very early age. Absolutely. And of course, we we get complacent and different things happen in our life, but I guarantee Mm -hmm. in the back of your mind, time (laughs) is valuable. Absolutely. And if I'm going to give my time to something, Mm -hmm. it is going to be my all. Absolutely. For that that something, for that someone. Yes. There's no half measures. No half measures. (laughs) Uh, Another thing I like to ask is your favorite ice cream. Mm. You said... And I've never heard of banana ice cream before. <laughs> you said banana ice cream. But see, there's a theme here. Mm-hmm. Spiritually speaking, mm-hmm. banana ice cream represents brilliance, health, and well-loved. Mm-hmm. Now, why that is, I'm not sure. <laughs> but that is the spiritual meaning. And so the eyes to the mm-hmm. soul, the brilliance and health of loving banana ice cream, Mm -hmm. the owls and their wisdom and their spirituality. And again, connection, love, creative, coffee, nature. Mm -hmm. That is all who you are. Absolutely. So we're going to get into what I call the famous questions. Now, if anyone is familiar with In the Actors Studio with James Lipton, you would know (laughs) what these questions are. You're a little young. You might not know these. (laughs) So think of the real estate industry, the title industry, Mm -hmm. when we're asking these questions what is your favorite word Mm. chaos chaos tell us why that's so interesting i haven't had that one before i think the real estate industry is there's chaos in every direction and it's constantly it's constantly solving problems and i love Mm. that Mm. and i i like managing the problems and managing the crisis and manage the the different things that are always happening. So when you hear chaos, you're like on the job. Yeah, I'm on it. The solutionist mm-hmm. coming to the case. Oh, yeah. Love it. What is your least favorite word? Hmm. My least favorite word is unauthentic. And I think that is because there's so many shows out there that show a certain type of agent and a certain type of market and a certain type of, of their job. Sure. And you guys do so much more than that. Yes. Yeah. And and it's unfortunate because we are not the used car salesman of real estate, (laughs) but there's a lot of agents out there who think they have to emulate that. Yes. And so they do so. And it's just so unauthentic to themselves and to the industry as a whole. And I think, again, the industry is shifting. We really are seeing the people Mm -hmm. coming to us for services are very similar to us. Yes. And that's really where the industry is going, Mm -hmm. a more individual approach. Very much attraction. Yes. So I want you to think about when you first wake up in the Mm -hmm. morning, what is your turn on? What gets you going? What makes you say, okay, this is another Mm -hmm. brilliant day? Or maybe not. What gets you (laughs) to that point? Yeah, I wake up every day and I'm excited because I love managing problems and solutions. So it's always a new challenge every day. And that's why I can never get bored of this job. And I love this industry so much now is I will never be bored. I was not meant to have a nine to five office job sitting behind the desk. I was made to be going to and from a million different appointments and events and classes and happy hours and just 
it's always something new and different. So that really, that excitement definitely gets me up. But but definitely my why is my family. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it is for a lot of us, too. Mm-hmm. And and I think, uh, you know, I like to use the word ADHD. Like mm-hmm. we 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 have the type of overthinking mind. Yes. That the brilliant mind is ADHD. Correct. You know, that is, that is a label that the world has given us mm-hmm. that they shouldn't have. And there's no reason to suppress that. If no. achievement brings you joy, mm-hmm. then achieve right. and serve, mm-hmm. right? So what is your biggest turn off? I think people that have a high ego mm. in this business. I yes. think, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people who have a certain ego and a certain ideology they want to portray themselves as, and and it's just not necessary. Right. No, I, I agree. And I can attest when I first got into this industry, you know, you, you fling around, you really mm-hmm. don't, if you have never been into real estate, you really don't know, and mm-hmm. you can get an ego and you can sure. be overtaken by others' egos, yep. right? And again, you really have to center in on who you are, why you're doing mm-hmm. this and what your purpose is. And that really right. takes you out of it. So uh, this is my favorite question. <laughs> what is your, and we will bleep this out. What is your favorite curse word? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I love it. We all like that one. I love it. It's got multiple purposes, multiple meanings. Absolutely. And, uh, multiple expressions. It's very versatile. Yes. We like, we like fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh, your, again, another one of my favorites. What is your favorite noise? Hmm. Wind blowing through pine trees. Mm. Mm. Love mm-hmm. that one. Love that one. Yeah. I often feel like when the wind is blowing through the, but the pines, the leaves mm-hmm. themselves, they're talking to each other. Yeah. Telling little it's, stories. It's like a little symphony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Least favorite. Hmm. I think any type of metal scratching. Yes. Like metal scraping, metal scratching, even like garage door. Yeah. It's it, that kind of on the chalkboard, yeah. nail on the chalkboard And type I think of it's, it's because I can't focus yes. when that is happening. Just like I can't focus when my husband's having a conversation with me, but the TV's really loud. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like my ADD brain is like going, trying yes. to go back and forth. Yes. And explaining that to someone for for him, he's like, I can understand perfectly. You just tune it out. And I, yes. I don't know how to do that with my brain. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm always like, babe, can we just turn it down for a second so we can talk? Yeah, yeah. you got to no, mute it you. and then we can talk. Yeah. <laughs> so this question, mm-hmm. a person, mm-hmm. dead or alive, mm-hmm. that you could have dinner with, mm-hmm. who would it be and why? Oh, my grandfather, definitely. Mm. Yeah, he was super special and still is very special. But growing up, he's was a phenomenal grandfather. And he lived to 100 years old. Wow. And um, he passed away a couple years ago. But wow. I absolutely adored my time with him. And we would watch, like, history channel together on Friday nights and we'd be on the phone together. He was in California and we would be on the history, same history sure. channel. Sure. Cause he didn't know how to use zoom <laughs> and we'd just be talking about it. And he's just a wealth of knowledge and he's a vet and was a medic in the war. And just, he has all these great stories, but he's the kindest man I have ever met in my life. Is that your takeaway? Being kind, mm-hmm. being kind. He, he, volunteered up until 99 years old he volunteered five days a week delivering food to the homeless and to elderly within his community five days a week never complained thought it was a gift to serve yeah and do you think that led to his longevity absolutely yeah it's that energy it's Mm -hmm. that longevity yeah and he was happy he wasn't super sick he wasn't super he didn't have any of the ailments that a lot sure. of people at that age have. Stress and lack of oxygen, mm-hmm. usually. Really, the result of death is hypoxia. Yeah. And uh, we can extend life through joy, through mm-hmm. service, and stepping out of stress, something I'm still working on myself. Yeah, me too. But, uh, but he walked every morning. Like, when I would yeah. go visit him, he uh, around 1 o'clock, I would be tired. 
Like yes. I'd be exhausted. And he's like, we still have like 10 places to go. And then we got to go pick up this and this. And so-and-so needs this. And they need their TV hung over here. And just constantly. Activity, movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that as well. So right now we're going to move on to the state of the market for the last quarter of 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are on a market update for the last quarter of 2024, sponsored by Great American Title. We have Bree Kruger with us and my co-agent Brian Legere. Let's get to it. So let's start with Brian. Brian, how have you felt this year is going and where are we going to? Um, I think the market is more like it was uh, pre-COVID, so um, pretty much normal. Uh, inventory's pretty good as well. It's about 20,000 homes, I believe. Um, due to the NAR rule as well, you, uh, you're you seeing a stagnation in in buyers because now they have, they're have they required to sign agreements, so there's a little bit of stagnation there. Uh, houses are on the market longer. Um, it's a bit of a gridlock right now, but that should be temporary um, overall. But it's pretty much a normal market. I, I know people don't remember what a normal market was. Yes. But uh, it, it, this is what a normal market feels like where houses are actually on the market for, you know, 60 days, sometimes 100 days, depending on uh, what, what bracket you're in, ter in terms of home price. Um, so overall, it's not bad. It's just you got a little stagnation going on overall. So Yeah. Bree, what are you seeing on the title end of things? Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely picking up, and I think that's great news for all of us in the industry. Um, inter when you say picking up, please expand on sure. that. Sure. So a lot more contracts are coming through. Nice. Um, you know, it's been a little sleepy, and it's been everyone's kind of on hold and waiting, and there's a lot of things that people are waiting on, including the election. Um, and some people are starting to get off the fence. Yes. And it's been proven year after year that prices go up after elections mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. year. Um, and, and that data is coming out and people are consuming that data differently. And I yes. think that's helping people really say, okay, maybe, maybe I should make the decision because we're going to have to buy a house anyways. I think one of the things that has happened, and like Brian pointed out, when we measure units, when we talk mm -hmm. about units, we look at single family home and we look at only active or coming soon. Mm -hmm. And we also only look at Maricopa County. Now, back in June, we were at about 8,000 units. Now we're pushing almost 13,000 units, mm -hmm. again, because of the stagnation. And what Brian had said, we're in a healthier market mm -hmm. for since COVID, really, we yeah. were in a frenzy, a ridiculous <laughs> frenzy. I was telling buyers, you know, they were trying to go 650000 over asking. And I would look at them and I'd say, I can't lay my head down on my pillow at night. Yeah. If we put in this offer, we, we either back down, we buy something else, or we wait. Mm -hmm. That type of thing, along with the increase of interest rates, has really had buyers backing off. And like mm -hmm. you said, now they're like, oh we got more choices. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, across the board, with the exception of Scottsdale, prices are finally dipping. Correct. And when we say dipping, heading towards a healthy market. A balanced a market. A balanced market. Mm -hmm. So encouraging that the title side is now seeing more contracts mm -hmm. come in. What advice would you give agents at this point? Stay in touch with their people. You know, have those conversations now. Uh, inventory is a lot higher now, but there's also a lot of people that are still going to wait till January to put their homes on the market. And it's best if you really treat your client as they're buying tomorrow and get them prepared in the right way. So when they do find that beautiful home that they want to buy or they sell their home to move closer to their grandkids, they're ready and they're taken care of. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Brian, your age bracket, you've said many times, is really not interested in purchasing. Please expand on that. Um, I mean, they're just not, they're more motivated to rent uh, than anything else. My, Why are you seeing that? Yeah. I think it's a combination of the high interest rates that we've dealt with. Uh, inflation, obviously, is one of those things. Cost of living, it's not really a goal of most people in my age group. Um, they're not really searching to buy a home. They're really searching to stabilize their livelihood for the most part. And um, like when I was growing up, my mom's generation, they uh, obviously that's one of the first things they wanted to do was uh, get a home for their family and 
it was a goal of theirs. I feel like my generation is a little different. They're more focused on not really getting a home or not really, I guess, starting families as much. More focused on getting their paper up, so to speak, getting their money up. Yes. Um, I think goals are just different. And, and like I said, the market is vastly different than my mom's generation or I'm not sure Even mine. which your generation yeah. is, but <laughs> your generation. So it's a combination of cultural factors, the generational factors, and economic factors that I think um, show a difference in what my generation views as purchasing a home. So. so what would you do to encourage your generation Encar to um, purchase homes? What, what, what's the value there for someone your age, investment-wise? I mean, it's it's individualistic in my opinion, but um, I think if they're in the right financial uh, part of their life and it, it, they see it as a good investment, I I say always uh, shoot for buying a home because at the end of the day, that's uh, it, it, if you're renting, that money's just going. It, it's right. it, you can't get that money back if you're investing into a home. Um, eventually, you know, you, you'll be able to make a profit off that home because it always appreciates. So at the end of the day, buying a home is always a great investment. Um, I think it's just a mindset in my generation. And, you know, hopefully that changes. Um, we just have to motivate clients to do so. But, yeah. Real estate is still the number one way to become wealthy and it have is. generational yeah. wealth. You could pass sure. it down to your kids if you have kids. Um, you could... Equity is always useful. If you have a business, you can use equity on your home to um, further invest in your business. I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with uh, purchasing a home. So, I think I would safely say look forward to a class that Brian will be directing on how to get young people to invest in homes. <laughs> Possibly. Get that paper up. Get that paper up. Get your money up. You know, that yeah, helps. And that's that one of the ways you could do so is if you invest into uh, purchasing uh, a home. So yes, absolutely. It's, if, you got the, if you got the capital, um, if your life is stable and you feel comfortable, I would say that's one of the best decisions you can make is definitely uh, looking to purchase uh, a home that you could uh, eventually do some things with. Yeah. Now, before we close, I want to highlight that Great American Title Company mm -hmm. gives back to first responders, VAs, military. You do have reduced escrow fees. But you guys do something really unique. What else do you do mm -hmm. uh, at that signing? You contribute towards a charity of the client's choice. Please expand yeah. on that. It's something that our president and founder here at Great American was – very big on wanting to implement and it comes from his heart and he said what if we did something crazy and a part of every escrow that would have been revenue what if we donate somewhere locally and that's what they started doing I think they they first started in 2017 mm -hmm. um, and last year they donated over a million wow to wow. local charities that is beautiful mm -hmm. well Please sign off. We'll start with Brian. Say Brian Legere. I'm with EXP Realty. I'm the co-agent of Kimberly Toko. Bree Kruger, Great American Title. Kimberly Toko with Tenacious Real Estate.